three run whiskey six lima golf w six l g whiskey six lima golf q r z europe Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. I'd like to discuss a topic that I haven't seen discussed anywhere else, and that is the art of the contact or the art of the QSO or the art of the conversation. Um, I think that uh, one of the neatest things about Ham Radio is this meeting someone on the air that you haven't talked to before and learning something about that guy, engaging that person in conversation and seeing where it leads. So here's, here's how it generally works. You, uh, you call CQ and you, you do it several, you give your call sign several times and maybe you spend 20, 30 seconds calling CQ and someone answers. Now what do you do? Well, <clears throat> that's where the art of the QSO comes in and let's, Keep situational awareness uh, at the forefront. You're aware of what's going on, how well he's hearing you. Uh, if he tells you he's three by three, it's going to be a very different conversation from someone who says you're five by nine and you're pegging my S meter. Um, also, if if the guy's really not hearing you well, you may be hearing him well, but he may not be hearing you all that well. Give um, give your call sign. Um, give his call sign and your call sign. So it would be W5XYZ, this is W6LG, and continue on from there. Um, if the guy's really, really strong, the back and forth may occur uh, like a, uh, uh, where you say a few words and he says a few words. Could be Vox, could be push to talk, but it's sort of this rapid fire back and forth. And that's okay if the guy's really strong. If he's really weak, it's not going to work well. So, in the initial transmissions, uh, you give your name, your location, a signal report. He does the same thing. Uh, make the conversation from that from that point forward about him. Um, instead of it being about you and your antennas and your linear amplifier and whatever else you've got, find out about the other guy because... That's where the, the interesting part comes in. Uh, I've had some incredibly interesting conversations that led down paths that I never would have dreamed of when I started uh, the conversation with that guy. So, and, it, and a couple of inappropriate, for me, a couple of inappropriate um, uh, topics would be politics and religion. I think those should be avoided. That's my view. You may have a different view, and I will, will respect your view, but I, I don't know that it serves any purpose to discuss who's running for president and whether or not one or the other is an idiot or whatever, or to discuss religion. So what do you discuss? Well, listen to what the guy's telling you. Again, situational awareness. What where is he from? Is uh, You may want to ask him if he's retired or if he's still working and, and where he works. Um, if he has an interesting piece of equipment like a homemade amplifier, ask him about the amplifier. Um, you may want to ask him when he got his license. I think that's, that's fair. Um, why is that important? Because that story uh, may lead back to the 1950s and uh, what he went through to get his license is sometimes pretty interesting including the kind of equipment that he used uh, back in the day. So make it about the other guy. Uh, be as friendly as you can be. Uh, be engaging. Um, listen to what he's telling you. Use those cues to figure out what your next question is going to be or the next, the next topic. And it will lead you to some absolutely amazing contacts. So uh, the art of the QSO really is listening to the other guy, making it about the other guy, listening to his answers and picking out things in his answers. Um, don't interrogate the guy, but I mean, you know, in the conversation um, about what 
what might be interesting and sometimes there's this common ground that comes up that um, uh, that you hadn't anticipated and it's just out of the blue for example I talked to a guy the other day and I noticed on QRZ.com that he had a bunch of call signs from other countries and it turns out he had been a missionary it was fascinating he's been in a lot of neat countries he's had a lot of great experiences uh, Sometimes when you look up the guy on QRZ.com, he's got a last name that matches one of your family ancestor uh, ancestors' last names, and um, there may be uh, a common thread there. And that happened to me with a guy named Youngblood. He uh, he and I are not related, but have similar um, family histories, ancestry histories. In any case, really try to make it about the other guy. Listen to what he's telling you. Be aware of what's going on, and don't be afraid to ask him a question about uh, about something that maybe is slightly off of ham radio, but it's something that he he brought up uh, as he was uh, answering uh, a, a prior question. And um, I think you'll find out that you can have these serendipitous QSOs that are are just amazing and can be lots of fun. Uh, anyway. I'm kind of running at the at, to the end of this, but because uh, I'm running out of time, I hope you found this interesting. If you have, uh, please subscribe. If you have some questions, uh, please post them. Um, I've got some other videos planned that are of a more technical nature, like making a dipole center insulator and some other things coming up. Thanks for joining me. This is Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics, and that was the art of the QSO in just about five minutes. Seven three. See you the next time.